Hey everyone, Carl Schuf here from GreenSock. Today I want to talk to you about how the position parameter is the key to mastering your usage of Timeline Light and Timeline Max. The position parameter is used in nearly a dozen methods that are responsible for adding tweens, callbacks, labels, and even nested timelines. Today though, I'm just going to focus on how it is used in Timeline Light's to method. I want to walk you through a bunch of demos that are going to show you how easy it is to add gaps in your animation, create animations that actually overlap, um, you can use it to position your tweens anywhere at an absolute time, and you can even add your tweens at labels or relative to labels. Don't worry, you'll get to play with these demos later, and I'm also going to walk through each one and explain it in detail. Before I get into the nitty gritty details of how the position parameter works, I just want to illustrate why it's so important. You know, when other tools talk about sequencing, they're really talking about it in the literal sense of one animation runs and then triggers the next and the next and the next. There's no overlapping, there's no real control of tween placement. So take for example this animation here where it's that sort of boring old chain of animations. One thing animates and then the next. So we have you know, the header comes in, then the subhead, and then the image, and then the paragraph, and then each icon. You know, the saying is, there's nothing worse than waiting for an animation to end. So here, when we're sort of cuffed to this concept of chaining, uh, you really can't have a lot of fun. Um, I have over here the same animation, but I've used the position parameter to do some overlapping and have some things scheduled at the same time. So the duration of all the tweens is the same, um, but the overall impression of the uh, animation is just a lot nicer, okay? So if we scrub through this slowly, you'll see the subtle differences where um, the subhead comes in before the header stops animating. And then you can have the uh, image and the paragraph coming in at the same time. And then you get this really nice staggered effect of the icons. So that's the sort of thing we're talking about. All right, folks, to illustrate how the position parameter works, I'm going to be using my timeline visualizer. We're going to start out with a very basic timeline that chains together three timeline light two tweens here. Okay, um, Each tween is identical. So we have the green box moving for one second, changing the X to 750. And then directly after that, we're chaining the tween of the blue box moving and then the orange one moving. Our timeline has a total duration of three seconds because we have three tweens, all with a duration of one second, playing in direct sequence. So now if I want to change around this direct changing a little bit and offset the start times of certain tweens, I'm going to be using the position parameter. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to add a gap to a timeline by using a positive relative value for the position. So I'm going to tack on an additional parameter here, and I'm going to pass in a string value with this plus equals notation, which basically means offset the start time by one second. So here, this tween normally would have started directly after the end of the timeline, which happened to be the end of the tween prior, but now when I run, you will see how the position parameter now says, okay, the second tween is going to start one second after the first tween ends. So we have the first tween going for one second, we have one second of dead space, and then at a time of two, the second tween starts. And notice that the third tween is still naturally chained on to the end of the second tween. Uh, we have a lot of flexibility with this approach because I can now say that the first tween is going to be two seconds long and when I run you'll notice that now we have a two second long tween for that green box we still have that one second offset and then the third the second and third tween follow normally so if you're using a system that only allowed you to set absolute start times and you change the duration of the first tween well then you would have to change the start time of the third and fourth tween so here I just want to show you that um, it's all very flexible all right, now that we've seen how to add a gap using a positive relative value, let's see how we can do some overlapping using a negative relative value. So here we're just going to change the insertion time of this one to be minus equals one. Again, a relative string value. I'll hit run, and you'll see what happens here is that the first tween again has a duration of two seconds, and then we're saying that the second tween is going to be inserted one second before the end of the timeline, which would now be a time of one. Okay, so then we have uh, the blue box play, 
and then the third tween is going to naturally follow. So watching that play through, you'll notice that we have an overlap there, all right? These two tweens overlap because the second tween is added one second before the end of the timeline. Now, I want to make it clear that whenever we're dealing with the relative offset of these tweens, it's always relative to the end of the timeline and not necessarily the end of the previous tween. Um, in these examples, it just so happens that, um, in right here, uh, the previous tween is the end of the timeline when we add the second tween. Um, but to make this absolutely clear, what I'm going to do is give this tween here a duration of 0 0.5 seconds. Hit run and watch what we have. So now you're gonna see that, okay, the second tween still starts at a time of one. It's one second after um, the end of the timeline here, um, but it's only 0 0.5 seconds long. So you're gonna see now that the orange tween doesn't start running until directly after the first tween ends, okay? So what we're doing now is I wanna focus on the insertion time of the orange tween. It doesn't happen directly after the previous tween ends. Notice the end of the previous tween is right over here. It happens at the end of the timeline. So since there's no position value here, this tween, when it gets added, says, okay, where's the end of the timeline? Well, Timeline Light sees that, okay, the first tween is two seconds long, and the second tween is only half a second long, and it starts at a time of one. So technically speaking, the end of the first tween is the end of the timeline, not the end of the second tween. So if I add a relative value here of plus equals one, again, this is going to be relative to the end of the timeline, not relative to the end of the previous tween. So let me run, and there you will see that that gap is relative to the end of the timeline. Currently, when this tween is added, the timeline has a duration of two, which is being set by the first tween. So when the orange tween gets added, the end of the timeline is the end of the first tween, not the second tween. All right, so I've reset the timeline back to no position parameters and all tweens have a duration of one. Now I wanna talk about absolute values, okay? Um, so to illustrate this, I'm gonna give the first tween a position of, sorry, a duration of four seconds. And I wanna say that I always want the blue and orange tweens to start at a time of one second. So we're gonna be using an absolute value, which is just going to be a number for the position parameter. And I'm gonna tell each tween that I want it to start at a time of one, okay? So now let's run and see how that gets visualized, all right? Our first tween has a duration of four seconds long. And our second and third blue and orange tweens have now an absolute start time of one. So when we have these absolute values here, they are not relative to the end of the timeline or any other tweens in the timeline. So I'll just hit play so you can see exactly how that works. All right, you'll see that the second and third tweens start after the first tween and they end before the first tween. And to wrap up, Let's blow your minds showing you how labels work. So now what I'm going to say is that I'm going to add a label to the timeline so that I can mark the insertion point of tweens and also possibly navigate to that label. So right after the green tween ends, I'm just going to use the add method and I'm going to say, let's add a label called blue green spin. I'm gonna hit run. Ah, and look at that, a little label shows up at a time of one. So um, the add method works the same way. It's going to add whatever it's adding, whether it be a timeline, label, tween, or callback, um, to the end of the timeline. So right now the end of the timeline is the end of the first tween, which has a duration of one, giving us that one second. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say that I'm going to add this timeline, I'm sorry, this label, at a relative value. So the add method takes a position parameter also, and I'm gonna say plus equals one, okay? Do that, boom. And so now you'll see that it moved the label over relative to the end of the timeline um, to a time of two. Now the insertion of a label does not adjust the duration of the timeline, nor does it naturally push the tweens that follow out of the way. So that's a very important thing to note. 
But once that label is in there, I can then, in the tweens that follow, say, you know what? I want to add you at the blue green spin label. So I'm going to do that for both of these tweens. And so now you'll see that both the second and third tween happen at that label at a time of two. So the green box is going to move for one second. We're then going to offset the label position by one second. And then both tweens will be added at that label. So the whole point of having this blue green spin label was so that I could also, you know, add a fun little spin to this animation. So when you hit that label, we should start seeing some spinning happening. And so we'll just play naturally and then you hit the label and both spin and move at the same time. Pretty cool. But not only can you add tweens at a label, but you can add them relative to a label. So what I'm going to do here is say that the orange one, I don't want it to start exactly at the blue-green spin label, but how about half a second later? So I'm going to tack on that plus equals 0 0.5, and then when I run, watch how this gets visualized. So half a second after the blue-green spin label, which is going to be at a time of boom, 2.5, there you are, that's when the green, I'm sorry, the orange box will start rotating. So we have at a label and we have relative to a label. Now that the label is in there and my tweens are happening at that label, I want to show you that I can offset the position of the label. Maybe I'll make it happen uh, two seconds after the end of the timeline or after the end of the previous tween in this case. And so now I've moved the label and I've moved the relative position of those tweens. So, very powerful what we can do with labels. So to wrap up guys, I'm gonna leave you with some interactive demos that you can scrub through. Well, you know, got one for gaps, overlaps, absolute positioning or anywhere, um, and labels. So what you can do is scrub through these demos, you can read the code um, and really see how the different ways of using position parameters uh, can change the position of your tweens in a timeline. You know, and keep in mind too that if we didn't have the position parameter, it would be virtually impossible to build animations like you see on the Greensock homepage. If we had to rely on one tween triggering the next tween, uh, it would be ridiculous and impossible. And also, the position parameter gives us the flexibility of when we need to offset the position of a nested timeline, we can do that. If I want to change the duration of one tween, I don't have to change the duration of a thousand other tweens. So uh, it's an incredibly flexible way of creating animations. And uh, I really urge you guys to dig into it, study the demos I've provided, and also go to the docs, all right? Here are our new docs. We're going to load those up. And I want to show you that we can just jump into GSAP Timeline Lite. And what you'll hopefully notice is that this position parameter that we've talked about in context of the to method is also used in the add method, as I showed you. There's add label, uses position. Add pause, uses position. Call, uses position. So there's lots of methods throughout the timeline API uh, that use position. And once you understand it, you're really going to be a timeline master. So check it out, play around with it, and I'll see you guys in the forums.